Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say um, hello and welcome to sharing our joint project Earth 101 sharing session. Um, today, you sorry. Okay. Today we are joined by amazing lecturers and students from Ciputra University, Birmingham City University, Tuanku Abdul Rahman University of Management and Technology, and also the Yeh University. Um, today we'll be sharing insights about sustainable development goals and problems that are present in each and every one of the countries. Uh, there will be 11 presenters and I'm sure today's session will be really insightful. So uh, to start today's session, I would like to invite um, Mr. Christian Angrianto, the Dean of the Head of Visual Communication Design from Chipotle University to deliver their opening speech. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Good morning and good afternoon to all. I'm really excited to see you all here. Our friend, both lecturer and student, I made, I Dirna, Rob, Royer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lecturer and student for Birmingham City, England, Tar UMT Malaysia, Daye, Kaye, Taiwan, and also uh, MMU Malaysian, Malaysia as well. I hope this collaboration can help give a better meaning of the profession, profession of designers, not only as an aesthetic visualizer, but also a change maker. So good luck all, let's make this happen. Thank you. And from the United Kingdom, uh, I've been Birmingham City Next University. Next up, we'll hear another opening speech by Mr. Robert Jiv, the course director and Master of Arts Postgraduate Studies and Visual Communication from Birmingham City University, United Kingdom. To Mr. Robert. Thank you. Sorry, I left in there a little early. Um, so I'm Associate Professor Rob Gibb, and I'm also the Master's Course Director for Visual Communication. And I'd like to thank all the universities who have agreed to be involved in this really kind of interesting and quite progressive project in terms of design, design philosophies, design thinking, practical practice making, and for this opportunity for students across the globe to deal with some of the 17 sustainable goals that's been put in place by the kind of World Health Organization, but much more importantly, to be able to sort of see how similar and possibly how different the ideas are and the solutions for some of the problems that have come up through the processes of some of the research that all the students have been doing over the last several months. And just from my own perspective, um, having had several meetings with a lot of people on screen at the moment, to be able to say that there are certain very interesting sustainable goals that the students have in common, but they're seeing them from radically different cultural perspectives and I think that's probably one of the goals that we set ourselves during this process that will really enhance how we can begin to sort of develop the teaching methods that students use and how the students will teach us as well so thank you for inviting all of us and thank you for inviting the students as well thank you the opening speech um, next, we have another another opening speech, which will be brought by Mrs. Dearna Ki Jun Shen. I apologize if <laughs> if there's any mispronunciation in your name. The, the Dean of Faculty of Communication and Creative Industries from Tuanku Abdul Rahman University of Management and Technology, Malaysia, to Mrs. Dearna. Thank you, thank you, MC. 
Good evening to all my uh, colleagues from Malaysia and also Indonesia. And to Rob, good morning to you and your students. <laughs> I know it's very early on where you're at. <laughs> okay, so um, I would like to, first of all, thank you. Uh, thanks to um, uh, Mr. Ray, actually the organizing chair. I'm, I don't see him around. I'm not so sure whether he's around <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. All right, uh, for this, uh, for inviting Taru MT to be part of these collaborative projects uh, together with the other three institutions. And uh, we are very honored with this uh, invitation and we hope that uh, with these um, collaborations we'll be able to go further, uh, 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 not just this uh, particular project, but go further uh, later in other collaborative projects as well. So I think after weeks of planning and meetings, <laughs> Like what Rob said, we have been meeting each other quite often in the previous uh, weeks. Here we are today in this virtual platform where four uh, partner universities has come together for this inaugural start of the project. There's the sharing session um, where our, we'll be seeing our students uh, from different countries, different cultural backgrounds come together to present their um, ideas and present their uh, creative possible creative solutions uh, to the issues pertaining to UN uh, SD goals. So we uh, look forward to this presentation and we wish I wish to um, what is already uh, the students all the best uh, in their presentations. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Mrs. Diana. Diana. Um, last but not least, we also have another opening speech by Professor Eva, the, the Associate Professor for Visual Communication Design from Daye University, Taiwan. To Professor Eva. Okay, um, thank you. Um, good day, everybody, and all around the world. So, um, I am, my name is Eva Tang from Taiwan, uh, Daya University, the Visual Communication Design Department. Um, me and my students, we are appreciate that we have this opportunities to uh, learn from you. Um, all the professors and students, uh, I've been teaching for 24 years and also I am a graphic designer. So I know how the young generation can be uh, creative, how, how they have a great ideas and, and also the solutions. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hear from all the students, their uh, great ideas and, and all the presentations. Thank you. Thank you for the opening speech. Um, today we have with us, today we have it with us, 11 amazing teams and individuals who will be presenting their research and also their ideas for the possible solutions of uh, sustainable development goals. As Mr. Robert said in his opening speech, uh, sustainable development goals are uh, a goal that we are all fighting to achieve in our own respective countries. So the 11, the 11 presenters here will be discussing about the problems that they have researched, that they have observed in their respective countries. And I personally, and I'm sure all of us are, are excited to see what they have come up with. So, um, shall we just start with the presentation? Okay. Um, first up, we have a presentation from the team from Chiputra University, from Andre, Michael, and team. Will they be to from Chiputra University? Okay. Um, as we wait, uh, we'll explain the rules for today's presentation. Each team has five, a maximum of five minutes to present their presentation. And when the time shows four minutes, there will be a chat to remind that the time is almost up. 
and the presenter will share their own screen and there will be a discussion of a maximum of two questions or five minutes discussion time. Are you guys ready? Okay, so hello everyone, good evening. So we are here to talk about three children issues that become our topic to be discussed further. So our team consists of five people. From your left are Jordan, Jordan, Miraclin, Victoria, myself, Celine, and last but not least, Andre. So here are topics we are going to discuss today. Let's start with the SDGs uh, we want to raise. This is a preliminary description of what happened in Indonesia. We would like to show and visit the other side of the issue in order to better educate the, the public on a very important concern. Quality education is one of the things that the government must feel, fulfill for every citizen. The goals of the SDG, SDGs discusses how to improve education for the poor, grant access to basic services, and, pro, and protect society from all forms of disaster. This SDGs is very important for the development of the country by forming people who are more educated, have good teacher, and have good quality. So we created this project that hopefully can help many people. So here are the background of our research. Indonesia is ranked 110 over 187 countries from the data of UN Development Program report on 2015. From Human Development Index with a score of 0.684, lacking behind two Asian neighbors, namely Malaysia, ranked 62, and Singapore, ranked 11. So there are three categories of street children. The first are children on the street or children who carry out economic activities on the streets. Second, children off the streets or street children who carry out full activities, both economic and other daily activities on the streets. And last, children from families on the street or children who come from families who live and work on the streets. So why do we choose Sidoarjo? Based on the calculation by BPS 2019, as the statistic central of Sidoarjo, as many as 145 street children found it, while the rest we haven't known. So the phenomenon of three children in the area can be seen at various points in Sidoarjo district, Sports Arena, Karangan Junction, Celeb Junction, City Square, and Putang Junction. Apart from disrupting public order, the presence of street children also damages the city's landscape, as well as carrying out various actions that are quite troubling to the community. These are some factors that cause children to become beggars and live on the streets, such as organization, economic problems, parental violence and pressure, or the basis of their own choice. So what has the government done for them and what should they do? So various city government policies in dealing with street children been proposed in various ways, including by sending them to a place where they can improve their skills. Other efforts can be taken in dealing with street children are by free fulfillment of nutritional needs, provision of free basic health services, and last provision of free education services. Also seeing the condition of street children near our city, we would like to help those who need proper education by going directly to the field and conduct direct surveys and interviews. And the end result is a campaign in the form of photo and video documentation of several street children in Sidoarjo with a black and white or low key concept served in a book that contains narrative explanation of the stories of each children interviewed. Education is important for them, not just how they are going to reach up for education, but now the education goes to the street. That's how to help them through education. Sesti Laila Tulatifa, the main initiator of SSJ, serve street children as a helpful community to take to the streets and help educate street children. She made hashtag safe street children trending on Twitter, then others started following her to continue it to other cities. 
We are working with Mr. Dwi Prasetyo, the founder of Safe Street Children in Duarjo. He's someone who understands the situation in the Duarjo, which makes him see that the surrounding environment requires more handling of the street children, and finally decided to establish a center of Duarjo. So, where are we here? We are here to help these children to get an equal education their future and also to help the safe street children organization. Here is our design concept, the color palette, color appearances, and sketches. From this collection of documentation, the book that will be made contains narrative explanation of the stories of each child in their picture. Okay, so as human, we must have a conscience to help each other in our distress. We cannot expect more, more from other people or even from the government, but we must take action for them because the smallest help from us make a smile on their face. That's all from us. Apologize for our mistakes, whether it's purpose or not. Thank you for listening and any questions. Hey, thank you for the amazing presentation. And if anyone from the Google Meet maybe have any questions. Can I just ask a question? <laughs> it's a, I think it's an interesting idea. And I think the, the, the idea of education and to take people off streets and educate them is really interesting. It's, it's more of a kind of practical question. So you're, you're making a video, you're making a book publication, you're choosing black and white as a really interesting way of kind of truth telling. Um, it's, it's, it's a more logistical question. Have you thought about how much money it might cost to do this? Uh, so it's just because it's an interesting concept, but how would you sell the concept to say, for example, a government or a council or some sort of local thing? I'm probably probably being a bit harsh on you, but. <laughs> Sorry, Andre. Um, so this so this project doesn't need any cost. Uh, oh, okay. To take the education to the streets, so we uh, try to help educate them by going to the streets by. Uh, okay. Going to their shelters and give them some education that they need, so they can be a better person in in the future. Oh, that's okay. That's I, that, I slightly misunderstood that then, because that's actually a clever concept to be able to to take the education to the student and not have the student come to the kind of education or the campus. <laughs> Oops, sorry, that, that's just a noise. Um, yeah, it's quite an interesting one. Okay, quite like that. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, we have room for another question, maybe anyone, maybe the professors or maybe the other teams. Okay, can I just follow up then? <laughs> I'll just loop in. Um, you said you're going to make a video and you're going to make a book. Um, in, in terms of the distribution of this, how do you think it would happen? Because a book is quite expensive to make and to distribute, whereas a video or a kind of TikTok, you can literally just distribute on your phone quite easily. So have you thought about when it's finished, not now, when the work is completed, how you might choose to distribute it and to publicize and advertise the work. Slightly separate question. We're having a chat. So uh, maybe we can promote our product by by posting it on Instagram, YouTube, 
and then make a website maybe so oh. they can consume our product in online so if we we need to print the book we oh. can um, collaborate with some bookstores mm. uh, example like Gramedia or Accentra one of the other students here, Juby, has just asked would it, how much would it cost to print the book, which was part of the question about asking about costs, because if it's all done digitally, it can be much cheaper and done digitally. Yeah. And accessible to most people if it's uh, digital, which I think is an interesting form. <clears throat> one, I can ask another question. If you are going to design the book, have you got a designer in mind or are you going to work with some of the other students, maybe in some of the other universities, um, to maybe talk to a graphic design student or a layout design student who might help? Because that could work. So, okay, uh, maybe for the cost or for the money, you can search it with sponsor. We will work with sponsor or. We can uh, do the donation. So in our book, you can see the barcode on the book that we would like. Uh, we would like. We would so happy if you maybe do the donation too, because our because our first purpose is for to do the donation and also we design the book ourselves and okay. we promote we distribute and produce the book ourselves uh, maybe we just need a partner from the marketing and sponsorship okay. also we uh, have uh, collaborate with SST as we present uh, there we we take donation from the the people here that want mm -hmm. to give their money to help the kids from that money we can also take and produce the book mm, thank you good answers thank you okay so that's okay um yeah so the team so the team has already collaborated with sse safe street children in Sidoarjo. so uh, it will be their partner in promoting and also maybe fundraising. So maybe your homework after this is you're going to have to figure out how much the cost is needed to actually make and publish this book. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that was our first presentation. Okay, so that was our first presentation. And next up, we have the second presentation from the students at Da Ye University. Once again, I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of the university. Um, maybe from the second team from Da Ye University. Hello. Ready to present Hello. your ideas. Okay. Hi, we are the 20C graduation project student from Daye University. Our, uh, uh, we are visual communication design. And what we did in this graduation production is a public welfare planning project, re-period based on a curb caption of menstrual poverty and circular design. The development, we hope that every woman can receive the woman's care and we want to take action to help them. What's menstrual poverty? Menstrual poverty refers to women who cannot afford a lake or sanitary product during their menstrual period. When Menstruation 
occurs, they will reduce the number of century products used or replace them with other incorrect materials, such as bark, socks, toilet paper, leaves. So repeat, repeat general infection may occur of each such a dentals uh, and some sent, uh, cervical cancer and serious mental health effects such as, such as anxiety and depression. Therefore, when women fall into mental poverty, it may happen that they have in government movement and cannot move freely. Provide part are uncomfortable. Sorry. Therefore, and menstruation is a normal phenomenon that every woman needs to experience for 30 to 40 years in her lifetime. About 60,000 milliliters of blood are shed, which is in then lent to the blood value for four adults. In Taiwan, every woman needs to spend nearly $3,256 on those things product in her lifetime. For such a large expenditure, for women from poor family, family and financial trees isn't always possible to pass their menstrual period safely. And, uh, and material poverty is also a problem that exists regardless to culture, and it is in all countries. There are even more than 10,000 girls and children in many countries. Because of menstruation, they cannot afford sanitary products, so they cannot go to school. This will become a vicious circle. This problem is not only in developing country, but also a problem that needs to be faced all over the world. And now we have uh, some survey data. First one is Japan. According to the survey data, ha there have 8.1% of women when, when often, well, women often have difficult to purchasing menstrual period uh, products. And most of them are young women. According to the survey, in order to in order to deal with the difficult of purchasing, there have 50% of women will reduce the frequency to change menstrual products, and 40% of women will choose the choose to use toilet paper instead. Second, Brazil. According to uh, survey data, one out of every four female students in Brazil is a, a span from school because they do not have proper sanitary supplements. Number three, United States. Two out of five people in the United States have to face mysterious poverty every, every month. In addition, 38% low-income women say that, that being unable to purchase menstrual saplings protects from working. There are two countries have some special um, example. First one is Scotland. The Scotland government has took the lead in passing in passing a uh, legislation and became the first country in the world to provide free phenomenon product to all people. Second, Taiwan. With great organization, provide mental supplements to more than 500 girls every month. 
and this is and this is our create creating move move movitation and our uh, and our final design including books book and a handbag with close pads books were owned by the donor and handbags and close pad to be delivered to teenager girls thank you everyone thank you Oh, just ask. Hold on, I've got a question here from one of the students. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the question I want to ask is that if your uh, if your final form is going to be in the form of bags, um, the, the same question I had for the previous uh, students. Uh, how are you going to? Um, I mean, uh, incorporate the cost of the bags, or how many bags are you planning to produce? Um, because you have... can't have one bag in order to raise the awareness. So, um, we will make. Um, we decide to make. Oop, your microphone. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry, there's some microphone feedback there. Sorry, I missed the beginning of that. Okay. Um, we, we, uh, we probably want to make 50 bags in this project to help those teenager girls. Fifty bags. Yeah. Okay. Just a specific. Sorry, I keep le leaping in here, and I don't mean to. Sorry. Well, I do actually. Okay. Um, just a quick question: Is um, is is it is it to, is is the, is the process to raise awareness of period poverty through the use of the bags, or is it to provide a product? That can be used. So the example you did in research to show that Scotland is the first country in the world to make them free. Um, that's not just um, it's just not an aware, it's not a raising of awareness through a campaign or advertising. It's completely functional. So it's it, they're delivering a, a, almost like delivering a service, I suppose. So it's just, it's just that question of um, I, I, don't, I don't know the answer. I, I have no idea. But is, if the bags are to raise awareness, is that awareness tied into the possibility of finding a, a social system that solves the problem? Does that make sense? I'm not, I'm not really sure, Sheed, if it does. Um, um, I, um... Mm. Yeah. Can I oops, can I can I just say what I've got one one of one of my students here, Juby, who's been doing her presentation at eleven forty. She's actually working on a project as part of her masters, which is called the missing chapter. And what she's been working on is um it's it's period poverty in India, but it's also how it was publicized and how it was used by I can't remember the title of the advertising agency was. No, by but by the advertising agency Leo Burnett. She's she's just told me she's sitting over there, um, and uh, she might put some links into the chat. They could be useful in terms of how some countries are dealing with it at a functional level. Yeah, she should put something in the chat. That's quite interesting because it is a worldwide uh, issue that is that has come up.
to the fore much more recently. But if, if she puts it in there, that could be useful. Okay, thank you for this. Any question for this presentation? Um, this is a truly interesting idea because I have never seen menstrual poverty uh, discussed in mainstream media. This is a very important topic, and I'm really glad to see this topic being brought in the in today's sharing session. Thank you so much. Amazing work. Thank you. Okay, it seems like someone okay has raised their hand. No. Hi, I got a question for this group. Yeah, um, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, all right, good, great. So I, I was just wondering because you guys are doing something with um, uh, this menstruation thing, and then you guys wanted to come out with a a, a, a bag. I was um, this is maybe perhaps you can actually work or uh, with a particular sanita uh, sanitary pads brand to get your, um, to have this uh, project awareness together, then I think you will be able to reach further um, to a certain target audience, a certain target groups uh, in this sense, rather than um, on your own on this project, you can actually work with a sanitary brand. It, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, then they perhaps they will be able to assist you to provide certain uh, maybe uh, fundings uh, to create this kind of awareness. Since oh. you are targeting teenagers, right? You are targeting teenagers, right? Yes. Because there are so many brands out there that you there is a possibility for you to work with them. Um. Yeah. Okay. This is a suggestion. Thank you, teacher. Welcome. Okay, thank you for the feedback. I think that concludes the Q&A session and feedback session for this presentation. Okay, thank you for the second team to present. Uh, next up, we have another presentation from Christopher Marcelino and team from Chiputra University. Yes. So hello everyone. So me and my friend here will share our projects about sustainable development goals. Uh, before we start, we'll introduce ourselves. We are from Visual Communication Design major of Universitas Ciputra Surabaya. So yeah, this is us. My name is Christopher Marcelino and my friend Nerandra Wirananda. Uh, we'll be presenting our project today. So besides me and Nera, there are Ihab Zaki, Marcelino Pramudita, and Buyung Nur Ramadan, who are part of our group. So first of all, we choose two SDGs team here, and that is no poverty and quality of education. After all, we tend to delve into the second point, and that is the quality of education. Quality of education itself is a goal to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So why we are choosing this team? So we feel that Indonesia is indeed a rich country, both in natural and human resources. Uh, yeah, uh, but however, the needs of people in remote areas are still lacking attentions. Population distributions and poverty are the big 
factors by the poor education system in Indonesia can occur. The Central Bureau of Statistics recorded that the number of poor people in, in, in March 2022 reached 26.16 million people or 9.54% of the total population of Indonesia. So the theme of quality education is very relevant to what is happening in our country, Indonesia. From that situation, we made a short film entitled Connection to provide awareness to the public. Uh, next. Uh, for our project, uh, the goal of our project is to raise awareness about this problem that not just Indonesia, but probably some countries may also have. We made this project in a form of short film. In this film, we made a character that represents the problem, the conflict, and also the despair. We took from various resources to make this project, articles after articles, stories after stories. We followed the story of Misno and his uh, struggles to find a good connection. The short film tells about a boy named Wisno. Wisno is a student from a deprived family. Fortune isn't really on his side. Wisno really wants to get a decent life someday. Therefore, he is determined to study up to further studies. But with his enormous ambition, he fell into something very, very dangerous. Now, these, these are, you know, some of the uh, pictures in our film. So now it's a few percent finished. Here are some pictures. But we gave you the opportunity to watch our teaser. I'm sorry for the trouble. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the teaser, we do really want to anyone who has the headphones, because me and my friends had put the effort to, you know, making the sound and everything. We really do. We really appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Nah, oke okay, untuk yang pertama atas nama. Um, thank you for your time. Um, can we go back to uh, presentation? Now that was a teaser, and we would. It was a very huge honor for us to present this. Thank you for your time. Um, perhaps there are any questions or feedbacks from the professors or maybe the other students. 
Can I just I'll put in my hand up? I don't know why. <laughs> so, just, 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 just some, some questions. Um, it's a, it's a short film. It's a, almost like a kind of is it an advertisement for? I mean, it's a trailer, but you, because you, you said at the beginning, uh, which I thought was really interesting, the idea of lifelong learning, which is something all universities are trying to do and do engage with, um, but then you've shifted it into raising awareness. Um, and I, I thought it's very interesting the way you've designed the sound, but the way you've also designed the kind of imagery itself, uh, especially the narrative, the storytelling element of, it's, it's almost like, um, I, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm saying here, but it's almost like it's you're giving the choice to the protagonist in the story that either it's education or it's criminality. Um, which I think is interesting because that that applies globally. It applies as much in Birmingham as it does in London or Paris or you know you know Chennai. It applies all over the place. So I think what you've got is a really interesting. It's an interesting story. It's an interesting narrative. My question is, how persuasive as a piece of information design do you think it could be? Okay, so, uh, excuse me, I'm gonna answer. Mr. Rob, uh, excuse me. So um, we made the story, uh, before we made the story, we actually did some research and we are quite confident that about in this story that it's, it's deep enough, I guess, it's, it's, it's deep enough that, you know, we did research of articles after articles that from the streets of like, what happened to these kids? What happened to these kids? Not just not just like from underage to like people who are like already age that they cannot go to school anymore. Like they share stories of uh, like they wish they could have done, they wish that they didn't done. Mm -hmm. So we are quite confident that this is uh, enough to share awareness to the people. <laughs> I mean, it might be useful uh, just in terms of style and design. There's a film called City of God. It's a Brazilian film from maybe 10, 12 years ago that would be really interesting just to look at in part of design. I'll put, I'll put the title in the chat, part of design, but also in terms of the quality of camera work and lighting skills that you're using. So have a look at City of, the, um, City of God as a starting point, unless you've already seen it. It looks like you've already seen it. Yes. Have you? Ah, okay. okay, that's fine then. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Yeah, that's the one in the favelas, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to add something. Yes, please. Yeah, just now I saw the kid was like, um, wearing some kind of a Star Wars short shirt, yeah, Star Wars shirts. But I think perhaps you can make the character looks more um, like you describe a deprived family. Because I think in terms of uh, symbolism and meaning, I think some, somebody with privilege would have access to Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, like that. So I think in terms of uh, executions, I think we really need to uh, go down to detail and uh, take care of the detail, like what kind of shirts to wear, what kind of uh, symbolism that will be around our uh, cameras, camera sets. That would be my comment. Overall, good. We will surely talk into it. Thank you. <laughs> um, to be fair, the Star Wars was actually, um, well, you know, uh, it's not really an actual merchandise, but okay. Thank you for your time. Uh, do we have time for another question? Oh, no, okay. 
Okay, so that concludes the Q&A session and the feedback session for this presentation. Thank you very much. You may return to your seats. Okay, um, that was a really good input. Okay, that last question about the shirt is, was a very good input uh, to make the story even more believable and to portray the poverty even more. Okay, so uh, after this, we have another presentation from Tar UMT University um, from the team from Tar University. Are you guys ready to present? I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. <laughs> Mention the title. <laughs> Oh, to Jane and team. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm from Ta UMT, Bachelor Degree in Graphic Design. And I have, I have preparing a presentation video. So let me show my screen. This presentation will consist of four parts. First of all, we will talk about what is the problem that we decide to do. Our topic is about over encoded vaccines that wasn't placed in the workplace and political. Malaysia has been ranked at 103 in Global Gender Gap Index 2022. As you can see from the table, our educational entertainment and Health and survival are both reaching 0.9. However, although the educational attainment are reaching 0.995, but the economic participation and opportunity and also the political empowerment only have 0.656 and 0.102. Based on our research, most of the women have facing sex things in workplace at least once. The sex things that women are facing can be divided into two categories, which is overt and covert. The overt sex things is more open and can be seen by others, such as the pair gap between gender, the sexual heroism, the use of gender identity as a reason for no hiring, demoting and dismissing due to the pregnant. For the covert sex things, it is more subtle, insidious, and less well understood by others such as the gender bias, the social job, ethics, and also the glass ceiling. The setting in political is more to the double standard for male and female politicians. Female politicians are often being excluded and being ignored due to the gender. For the covert setting in political is the glass ceiling and also the gender line during the communication. Now we will talk about how critical is this problem. Based on the research that we have done, 72 of women have experienced a women's gender inequality, and there are 56 of women have experienced at least one form of gender discrimination in the workplace. We have stated four types of sexism that often been explained. First of all, is the target between women and men. The target can be between 7.1% and 24.9% depending on the industry. Despite there are more women graduating from the university, the work gap between women and their male counterparts in professional and management sector is 20.3% and 60% respectively. Other than that, there are 39% of women have experienced offensive sexual jobs or members in the workplace. There are also have a lot of sexism in the job interview. 47% of women were asked about their marital status during a job interview. 22% were asked about their ability to perform certain tasks as a woman. And there are 40% of women being asked if they are pregnant or planning to be pregnant in the near future during the job interview. And also, the discrimination.
discrimination against the pregnant woman are often being happened in Malaysia. So, what should we say about it? Is the gender inequality being reduced in the working environment? The economy of the country can be increased. Based on the research that we have done, the unpaid housework that undertaken by women are among as much as 10 trillion of output per year, roughly equals to 30% of global GDP. From the political perspective, if the women are more participate in political, can contribute to the development of policies that are more responsive to women's needs and promote the legal equality. If there are lesser women in the political, the institution and policy are then likely to be directed toward the interests of those with the greater influence. As what Ruth Bader Ginsburg has said, women belong in all places where decisions are being made. It shouldn't be that women are the exception. Finally, we reach the conclusion. In our conclusion, Malaysian society still cannot to work political. It is not only impact on women, but also on men. Therefore, both genders should work for equality to liberate both women and men. Thanks all for me. Thank you for listening. Okay. So that's all for my session. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, as we know here in Asia, inequality uh, um, is still a very big issue, especially because here women are still expected to carry the burden of um, doing all the homemaking. Maybe there are any questions or feedbacks from the professors or the other students? Yeah, so just uh, one of the students, Juby, was just asking, how do you plan to raise this awareness? Um, which is, and it's, it's also allied to how do you plan to raise the awareness and have you thought about what the final form may be, the, the final outcome? You know, what sort of form would it take? You know, and is it publicity? Is it a book? Is it a cross kind of platform? You know, maybe an online campaign? I don't, I don't know. I mean, what I've, I've made some notes. There's some very good research there. There's a lot of really useful information. It's just, the, the question I think we're asking is, how do you translate the information into a visual form of design that an audience might engage with? Um, does that make sense, Jane? Sorry. Yes. Uh, we haven't like finally. We haven't like decide the final output, but we have an idea like the using the motion illustration through the through the internet platform to promote the gen the gender inequality that women have faced. Okay. Uh, quick question: Have you seen a website called Motion po Motion? Sorry movingposters.com Moving? uh, no. uh, I'll put it into the chat because yeah. it's a, it's, it's, it's a new web, new ish website and they do a lot of moving animated posters this is called moving I think it's called the moving oh no it's called moving posters it's very new it's less than a year old so it's still um it's, it's still in a beta stage but they use a lot of graphic design, animation, and it's moving posters that can be seen on billboards, but it also passes straight to your phone, so it crosses different media. And it could, it could, it could be interesting. I know that um, some of my students are using the, that form of motion graphics, sort of, it's, it's a cross between motion graphics, animation, graphic design, but it is fairly new-ish. But it might be something to look at it might, it might might give some ideas about how you take the information and translate the information into something visually engaging, possibly. It's just a thought. I'll put it in the chat for you to look at if you want to. Okay, thank you. Hey, thanks, Rob, for the suggestion. I, actually, they showed me already their ideas in the class, and it looks like something that you described earlier on about the moving poster, similar like oh. that. Just that okay. probably it's not in the in the in the 
poster uh, format. Format. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one they still need to uh, discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Plenty of time. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you very much. Okay. I think that concludes the Q&A and feedback session for this presentation. Uh, such an interesting topic and it's very relevant to our situation today. Um, next up, we have another presentation from Daya University from He Guan Ru and team. There's a team present here. Okay. Oh, hello. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we will present our PPT by using pre record video. Hello, everyone. We are Infinite Forever, Chuan Liu Busi. We are from Taiwan Daye University. Infinite Forever, Chuan Liu Busi, is the brand that we design, means constantly flowing. Taiwan used to have an ancient name. In Latin, it's Formosa, means beautiful island. But this beautiful island is no longer beautiful. Our theme is Infinite Forever. Chuan Liu Busi. These are my group members. Guan Ru, Wendy, Alisa, Guan Yi, and Elijah. Next, we will divide our presentation into seven categories. I'm going to start with the motif. There's a nursery rhyme in Taiwan. It is saying like this. Means, there is a small river in front of my house. Taiwan used to have many beautiful rivers, but nowadays it's getting worse and worse. So, we would like to discuss the water issues through SDGs. Our design project divided into three parts, which are mobile learning box, treasure collection, and application design. We want to attract excavation, steer, and rethink attract attention during excavation to lead to correct consciousness and reflect on the process. Next, we would like to cite item number six, which is clean water and sanitation. We hope the SDG purification and sanitation will let everyone aware the value of the river quality in their daily life. So let's find the lost memory together. This is our mobile learning box. Our action classroom is divided into two layers. The upper layer is knowledge based. The lower layer is interacting mining model. And there we have tools and materials. There will be three different languages for the menu. First of all, we combine the woodcut map and the map of the northern, middle, south, east river. The top and the bottom will correspond to each other's geographical location. According to the garbage collection point, go to find the treasure. And the left side is the location of keeping the treasure. Next, we will have a drawing comparison version. Please find the right hotspot according to the location of the river. We also prepare several models. Each model will vary according to the personality of the river. This is one of the models, which is electroplating wastewater. In fact, it's keep appearing around us, like the grossy version on mobile phones and computers, which is blue. Ordinary jewelry or faucet factory make the river turn into red coffee color. Next. In Taiwan traditional market, poultry viscera or oily waste water is often poured into the drains, causing odor and affecting water sources. This is our mini-size model. 
for the feature of mobile learning box, we have immersive, work with, work with one hand, for adult and children, and more. What's more, we want to write a treasure collection book, which beyond geography and culture. This is the book. It contains seven chapters. First, Taiwan hydrology related. Second, water pollution of Taiwan. In Northern, Midland, Southern, and Eastern. Last, Taiwan River Picture Book. In the treasure collection book, we use composite paper materials and browsing mode, including water pollution analysis, pollutant analysis, field error photos, and QR website. We also design several logo based on the river thickness and rounded effect so that the logo has a sense of flow. This is the letter that we design. All design were based on the rivers, water drop, and maps. This is the combination between the logo and the letter. We also designed several different posters. The colorful part indicate the different type of pollution. We want to replace the traditional cramming education with an immersive experience so that everyone can educate and entertain at the same time. So let's find the lost memory together. Thank you for your attention. Huh. Interesting. Okay, what an amazing project and it's very well thought as you can see. Um, maybe the professors or maybe other students have any questions or feedbacks for Guandra and the team. Can I ask a question again? I seem to be doing this too much. I do apologize. <laughs> They're interesting yeah. subjects, that's why. Um, I've got several questions. One, have you heard of a thing called geocaching? Ge I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Geocaching was a kind of game that was developed probably about 20, 15, 20 years ago, where you could find things on your phone and you go to a location and you would then find objects. And I think, I think geocaching could be interesting to look at. Question I've got is, is this an educational game or is this um, education in terms of practice? Uh, it's one, one question. Is it uh, just a question? The second one question I've got is, the posters you have at the end that have been done with um, possibly sort of liquid materials, are you using the colour on those posters to say something? So because you've gone from, uh, you know, brown pollution, maybe to kind of rich greens and blues, which might mean they've been tidied up and cleaned. So sort of two questions there. Um, is the box an educational device? And then is the use of colour in the poster representation of pollution and the clean, the becoming clean? I don't think I've phrased that very well. I do apologise, but <laughs> does it make sense? And to the team. Um, uh, um, please allow us to discuss uh, the second. It's okay, don't worry, we have time. I somehow find your presentations a bit like a, uh, like a commercial, <laughs> like a Muji brand somehow even though even though the color looks uh different not similar to muji but i think probably the way the way they are present is very 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 smooth very soothing mm -hmm. as well <laughs> that's my comment yep. yeah yeah 
I agree entirely, Roy. I think it would be um, something in terms of uh, my, my question was about the kind of the, the color aspect of it, and could it be used in a almost progressive way to sort of show the cleaning up of a, a river process? But also yeah. the box yeah. itself is um, it feels it's well designed and the presentation's good. It feels like it's a bit a very educational almost like you would give to school children or teenage children at school to help them understand the processes of how pollution works with the environment. And number six is about clean water and sanitation. And it feels a lot like it's educational. And you're all nodding your heads. Does that mean it is educational? You can nod again. Mm -hmm. Um, well, from the first question, uh, we did not hear that before. And okay. Yeah. Sorry, the, the, the first question, sorry, probably some issues. Uh, the second question, yes, uh, this, uh, uh, this is for uh, pre-education. Okay, good. Yeah, entertainment. Okay, no, I mean, I think that's a good idea. Um, it's a very good idea, actually. Yeah. Okay. Good. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. Well done. It's a good presentation. Oh. Well. Okay. Uh, maybe there are more questions. I think we. Still one have... So I've just got one question here from, which is, which is asking me to say <laughs> thank you. Which is what was it again? Uh, how how would how how you let people how how the project itself let people know in the wider communities that it works? Yeah. Yeah. So that's an interesting question. So rather than just being educational, which it is, does it then go beyond being educational so other people? in the wider communities and villages might see it differently and understand the process. It's just a question. I'm not sure there's an answer, but okay. Interesting question. Okay, that was... Um, excuse me. Um, I think they wanted to do the product as a educational tool work with the uh, maybe elementary school, and then they can work with the uh, teachers to the certain uh, project to uh, let the children know uh, the problem. Because normally we uh, <coughs> are not open to uh, see the oceans, pollutions, things. So they maybe they wanted to work with the uh, uh, elementary school, especially elementary school or, or uh, teenager. <coughs> students to join the project to let, uh, let the uh, uh, ch uh, children know the problem is. And also, uh, the product can be as a, a commercial product. So oh, the sorry, parents sorry. can uh, buy it and to do some games and to, to, to know. Also, the, uh, the adults will also know maybe the problem things happen. So I think they uh they they trying to do that i think that's a good idea i hadn't thought of that so i hadn't thought about the fact that it could also be a product that is then sold on the market where people can actually so it goes beyond educational it's educational in an environment of a school or a college but then it's also a game that can be distributed that, that, that's a good idea actually it's, that has a lot of potential to make money I like that. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank definitely. you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, thank you to the professors and to the team for the presentation. I think that last question concludes the Q&A and feedback session for this presentation. Uh, it's such an interesting concept. The presentation is very well prepared. And I, I think we all would like to see this implemented in the future. Okay, uh, next up, we have another presentation from TAR UMD from 
Chong Shu Chi. Um, I hope I did not mispronounce your name. Please. Yes, yeah, yes correct. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so actually, uh, to avoid some sort of technical issues, such as um, my teammate, uh, she's having some connection problem right now. Uh, so luckily, we have recorded a video uh, for this presentation. So allow me to play this video. Everybody, hello from Malaysia. Uh, some together. We are a small team from Thai UMT. So uh, towards this as we did uh, project, our team has chose the 10th goal, which is reduce inequalities. So on our side, we have just done our first part, which is identifying and verifying a problem. So allow me to introduce me and my team. So I'm Shuchi, the team lead. And from our team, we have Yemi, Alice, and Yunping. Say hi. 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 Hello. Okay, so now we're looking at the table of contents. In this sharing today, we'll have four parts. Um, the first part will be the problem, what is social inequality? Next, we'll look at how critical is it by showing you the data and statistics we found online. And next, we'll look at what is the significance of addressing this problem in our uh, country. And at last, we'll have conclusion. But this part is basically our own kind of personal opinion. So. I don't think we'll focus on that so much unless you want to ask us uh, after our sharing. So let's jump into it. Uh, now, we look at the first part, the problem. What is social inequalities? I'll pass this slide to Jenny. Okay, thank you, Suchi. So our problem statement for our project is the inequalities in wealth, gender, and racial are prominent issues in our country, Malaysia. So. What is social inequality? It is the condition where people have an equal access to value resources, services, and positions in the society. Now, now this is the code we found at the internet set by Anwar bin Ibrahim, who is Malaysia's current prime minister. There's no meaning and sense in talking about freedom and justice. If we do not focus on issue of inequality that are inflicting harm to so many lives, we need to bring back order and good governance. Now I will pass back the mic to Suchi. Thank you, Jimmy. So what inequalities are there in our society? So based on our research from several sources that we found online, we found out that the main inequality in Malaysia are wealth, racial, and gender. So now uh, here is the rough kind of idea of what these inequalities are. So the first one is wealth inequality. This is the inequality based on the different kind of distribution of wealth and income. So it's like some people are uh, some some household they have more income, some are poorer, they they don't. So that's the difference there. Next, we have racial inequality. This is the unequal treatment based on physical characteristics. So as you may know, Malaysia we have different different races in our country. The main three are Malay, Chinese, and Indian. So all of us here we are Chinese. So yeah, based on our appearance, uh, sometimes we have different kind of. Um, opportunity in education and even in jobs. So that's the difference there. And last, we have gender inequality. This is the obvious of hidden inequality of power, all the world based on gender. So uh, in work workplace, some, some men, they have higher position in the workplace uh, compared to women. Uh, that's a rough kind of example. So in part two, how critical is this problem in Malaysia? We'll be showing you the data that we found. I'll pass this like that to Jenny. Okay, thank you, Suchi, again. Let me explain this part. The first issue of the inequalities is wealth inequality. We found this data from report released by our government. To note, the index one means perfect inequality, and the index zero is perfect equality. You can see the number of girls 
income and disposable income from the Indians has a bigger changes compared to the other two races. So the Gini index for them is divided from the perfect equality. Now I will pass the mic to Alice. Thank you, Jenny. We found this job vacancy experiment result online and it is towards racial inequality. From here, we can see all of the candidates in different races sent out same number of resume, but only Chinese receive the most number of callback. So in general, Chinese only need to apply for two jobs to get one callback, but it's different for the rest. Moving to next slide. Now we are looking at the callback ratio. The Chinese is the highest, the Indian is the lowest. And between hijab and non-hijab, the non-hijab is the highest. Next slide. For the callback rate of company with Mandarin prerequisite, the Chinese is still the highest that even combining Malay and Indian, they are still lower than Chinese. I pass the next slide to Yan Ting to talk about her gender inequality. Thank you, Alice. Now I will talk about the gender inequalities. Malaysia Gender Gap Index has increased from 2016 to 2017. That's shown here. Then to note the value of gender inequality index range between zero and one. Zero is inequality and one is equality. Then the index number show here tell us that there is gender inequality in different aspects, but in education attainment, it is almost equal for both gender. Okay, now I will pass the next slide to Shuqi. Okay, so thank you, Yin Tang. Now we look at part three. What does it, uh, I'm sorry, why does it matter? So what is the significance of addressing this problem? So from the data research uh, from outside, we found out that the wealth inequality in the country has actually increased. It started from 2016 until 2019. It increased and it even got worse after the pandemic. So this problem, it could lead to a drag on economic growth, such as inflation, and it could also increase the poverty number in the society, so it is bad. Next. Racial bias creates a huge inequality gap with the same qualification from the study data, with unequal opportunity of same effort would increase the risk of social status hierarchical society. Next. For the gender inequality, based on the research, Malaysia gender, in the gender gap index has increased, which means the gender inequality has improved. But in the economy participation and opportunities, percentage of women is lower than men. For example, the percentage of labor force participation rate for men is 80.1% and women is 54.7%. Next, I will pass to Shu Chi. Thank you, so what is the problem with all these inequalities? You, you might not wonder, these inequalities also exist in the other country as well. Is it a big deal? It is. In general, with the increase of this inequality in wealth, races, and gender, it would actually lead to economic decline, high rates of health, and social problems. So it is actually a big problem in the society. And yeah, it is bad. So at last, we have the conclusion. This is... Uh, like I said earlier, this is more to our personal kind of opinion, so we'll skip this part. So to end our sharing today, uh, I'll share this quote from our second Prime Minister, Doom Abdul Razak Hussein. So he said, as civil servants, I hope you will stand up to us for vision and not allow yourself to be dominated by us. Because in a true democracy, the civil servants have a duty to perform. The future of our country's democratic way of life is dependent on you. So we, we wish to use this quote to encourage our society to, you know, lend a help or basically have the awareness that these inequalities exist in the society. And we also wish to use this quote to encourage those uh, who have the higher power of position in the society to lend a hand to reduce these inequalities. So that's all from us. Thanks for listening to us. Thank Bye. you. Uh, so yeah, that's our presentation. Thanks. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, maybe any words from the professors or the other students? There's actually a question in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I'm reading it right now. Um, 
So I think I think uh, Chong Su Chi may answer. Uh, yeah. Is it is it uh, bias based on um, uh, beauty, a Southeast Asian beauty standard? Could it be the factor? What do you sometimes, think? Sometimes, sometimes these uh, problems do exist, especially like uh, in jobs. Mm, there, there's different kind of job in the society, right? Especially in beauty. Uh, so, so yeah, they do have this sort of uh, standard in uh, pre, um, in taking people. Uh, if they have a better, uh, how do I say, better image to represent something uh, that the job required, then yes. And there's also something like, uh, like job at the counter. P people will look at this sort of expect as well. So, um, yeah. Can I, can I just ask you, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, Chong. Can I just ask yeah, a question? Yeah. It's, it's, it might seem strange. Do you think that's something that is just specific to where you are or is it universal? Because I know in, in Europe and in the UK, there, <laughs> there are elements of that that come into play as well in terms of how inequality is addressed and inequality I mean, I, I thought the presentation was very good, and I thought the elements of dealing with wealth and poverty, you touch on issues. But I think here where you're touching on issues of, you know, I mean, it's a question that some of our students are dealing with, you know, what is beauty uh, uh, and how do you define it from a cultural perspective? So our, our students are very kind of, they're from all over the world. And one of the questions that some students are dealing with is, what is beauty? So I, I don't know how that filters into is it just certain standards are, and I don't know, maybe this is, maybe you could research this. Um, is, is there a kind of universal thing where people with lighter skin and symmetrical faces, you know, are they much more probable to get employment in certain ways? Because there are a lot of studies on it. Um, that was one question. And the other question I had, sorry, <laughs> I'll ask me two yeah, questions fine, at once, yeah. okay. was, um, what what do you think the end outcome or product or thing will be that you have with this project in terms of in inequalities? So sort of two mm. parts. Okay, so uh, to answer the first question, um, there, there is this thing. Uh, um, if we say Chinese, uh, they'll look at mm, fair skin, like the, how the uh, comments said just now. But um, we have this, we, we found this really interesting kind of fact when, when we do our research. Like in, uh, when people are applying job, right? Um, uh, like in our country, we have Malay. Some, some Malay uh, women, they wear hijab, some they don't. Uh, it's based on their preferences. Mm. Mm. So yeah, in, in, the, in that experiment, the, uh, it's actually done by government, they did. They found out that those, we, uh, those hijab women they receive less call less callbacks from those companies. The interesting thing is that um, the the people or how do I say the resume they send is actually the same person, but mm. but yeah, it's just like one one woman uh, uh, one of the resume the image they have hijab, another one they don't. So there's, so yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah, they how they pre perceive yeah perceive. There's something <laughs> something interesting ha happened with yeah. um. I can't remember, one of the orchestras in Britain, um, they were talking about diversity and inequalities and how they actually selected people to be in the orchestra, you know, whether it was a violin or piano or whatever. And so they did an experiment and what they did was they had auditions, but the auditions were always held behind screens. So you never saw the person, all you heard was how they played. And they did this, um, I think it was probably about five or six years ago, seven years ago, and it really radically shaped the demographic of the orchestra by the panel who were interviewing. They weren't interviewing how they appeared. It was, could they make the music? And they did it as an experiment. And I think now they do it as a form of live interview. I, I, if I can find the name of the uh, orchestra, I'll, I'll try and let you know, but it's one of the British orchestras in the last, six or seven years they did it because in terms of inequality it was interesting yeah yeah it is ah, yeah you know that one if you can 
If you can remember the name, Roya, tell me because I can't remember either. <laughs> I, I I read about it in Malcolm books, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, one, 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 yeah, one of the books. Yeah, brilliant writer, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Let me check that out. Uh, uh, sorry, what was the second question again? Uh, oh, the what? second question. Yeah, sorry, what are you going to do? Yeah, what are, uh, yeah, what are you going to do? In, Oh, so um, we actually haven't came up with, I uh, haven't come up with the uh, exact kind of idea that we're going to do, but um, for design, we'll probably, um, how do we say, uh, to us, design is not just, not just the visual, we, um, so we think it should be something functional, uh, probably interactive as well to make it more um, impact to make it more interesting if people could remember or they will, yeah, basically get engaged with it. So uh, it could be either printed or digital. So yeah, we haven't actually came up with the exact solution yet, but mm, this is what we have in our mind so far. Yeah, something interactive. Thank you, John. We'll yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for your question. Okay, uh, I think the last question concludes the Q&A and feedback session for this presentation. Thank you so much. Um, it's really heartbreaking to see social inequalities uh, and especially social inequalities exist in the modern world. Okay, next up, um, I hope all the participants here are still energized, especially the friends at VCU this morning there, right? Because we still have five more presentations to go. And the next presentation is from Juby Thomas from BCU, please. Ooh, good full screen, perfect. Uh, can you hear her? No sound. I need to turn my microphone off. I'm turning my microphone off. Yeah, yeah. Turn mine off. Yeah. Okay. Let me check if I can hear you. Okay. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ruby Thomas, and I'm studying MA Visual Communication at Birmingham City University. As a part of Earth 101 exhibition, we were asked to identify a problem that is challenging and linked to the 17 sustainable goals of UN. And the aim here is to create a design within our specialism, either to inform, educate, or persuade the audience and to help them to engage with the goals of United Nations. So the goal that I'm currently focusing on uh, calls about the sustainable consumption and production pattern. And the possible solution that I'm going to give here will achieve in helping the targets, the four targets that I've mentioned in the slide. So one of the personal reason or inspiration behind working towards this goal is because two years back when I was in India practicing architecture, I had the opportunity to collaborate with a university and document the uh, solid waste management uh, system of a city called Ahmedabad. And Ahmedabad is one of the largest city in the western part of India. So through my documentation, what I found is that the municipal corporation had a very good um, uh, infrastructure at place. Say for example, uh, various dustbins at uh, various locations or door-to-door -door collection system of waste and a very large uh, refuse transfer station. But why is it that the streets of Ahmedabad is filled with uh, the waste, <laughs> especially the food waste? And why is it that the animals are uh, gathered around it? The main reason here is the bad littering habit of the residents. So what they do is that the leftover food or the food wastage is being disposed in a plastic along with the other waste. Say for example, sharp objects like razors, blade nails, socks, etc. And these are being tied in a plastic and thrown from the balcony or on the street. Now animals, especially cows, they have a very strong sense of smell and they get attracted towards the smell of the uh, food waste. And in the end, they end up feeding on the plastic. So now this is a very serious concern because it is not only affecting the environment and the animals, but we have to realize that if this habit keeps on continuing, it is going to enter into our food chain. It is going to enter into our system by the consumption of dairy products and meat. 
so we are talking about two problems here one is the food waste and second one is the packaging so for the food waste a possible solution is that we need to segregate the organic waste from the other waste and this has to be done at the source uh, by source i mean home restaurants university canteen etc and another uh, solution is targeting the packaging industry they need to come up with creative materials which are biodegradable say for example from my research i found that there's a startup firm at london called as notpla and they are creating packaging with the help of seaweed and seaweed is easily biodegradable and compost so the end possible solution here is by educating the people about compost now i have created this design poster this is not my final design but this is an iteration and if you look at the poster it is specifically targeting the indian audience now you'll ask me why india well india the population of india makes the 17.7% of the total world population and persuading the audience educating them is going to have a big impact on the planet so here the poster the style of the poster is appropriated from uh, one of the um, famous indian folk art called as gond art and um, the reason why i have created this poster on a large scale is for its visibility and accessibility i do not want any resident to miss the message that i'm trying to convey here the aim of this poster is to persuade the audience and to change their attitude or to change their habit here what i have shown is that how their habit is impacting the environment and one day it is going to impact their children uh the second design iteration talks about educating the audience about my possible solution which is composting so as you can see i have designed two poster one for the kids and one for uh, the older audience so my um, uh, suggestion here is that this compost technique education needs to be given in the school so we can design posters like educational posters which the teachers can um, you know talk with the students um so the importance of composting for the 12th goal is somehow obvious and it will help to achieve the four mentioned uh targets thank you thank you for your presentation Whoa. okay maybe in that or questions from the professors and the other students perhaps <coughs> oh Francesca oh um i'm in the same room so i can talk to her <laughs> can i just ask a question question so what, what what do you think the finished output will be will, will it be a poster or will it be something else that links to maybe a live website or possibly i'm not sure what, what are the other forms it might take or does it have any other forms of design output so right now my mind so right now in my mind i thought uh, that maybe the first iteration that i've created i would be painting it on a piece of a uh, cloth which uh, which is made with recycled garment okay. that is one solution I, I mean that is one iteration in, in my mind and second is sending this across to the municipal corporation so that they can display this poster in this website Oh, okay. Okay, that's interesting. Interesting. <laughs> We're switching between We're switching microphones. Between microphones. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I, th I, th I thought this was interesting. Um, I'm, ju I'm, I, 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 um, I'm just going to put this into the chat because um, we came across this. It's called the Earthshot Prize. I, th I think most of you will have heard, heard of it. Um, it was a few weeks ago. And it, it's, I think it's the, what's it, the um, Prince of Wales Earthshot Prize um, dot org. And it's got some really interesting materials in it because what it has, um, the company that a Juby had found, it's a British company. Th these, these awards are worldwide. There's a British company which makes plus, sorry, it makes, what does it make? Seaweed, Seaweed packaging. So the packaging can either, after it's been used, it can either be composted or possibly eaten, which I think is an interesting idea. So Earthshot Prize seems to answer some of the sustainable goals. That could be interesting. Uh, I don't think I'll get any other questions, actually. I'll, I'll see if anyone else has. Hold on. I'm just going to turn this off. There we go.
You turn yours on. Uh, hello, everyone. Yep. Hi, Juby. Uh, actually, I don't want to ask any questions, but I want to. Okay. So sorry, Evan. We missed that one. Start again. Sorry. Fine. Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, Juby. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, actually, I don't want to ask any question, but I'm really impressed how you uh how you use uh use any uh use your theory and and design thinking and fuse it into the the Indian uh, culture, uh, uh, because I think it's it, it's really important to to us uh, to never forget our our roots in uh, 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 in culture, and I also thinking if uh, if only uh, uh, if only uh, your project is poster of of a cow or drinking on e or eating a plastic uh, can be adapted to maybe to fair. Uh, to various culture in maybe in my country Indonesia or in other co uh, country maybe in China I think it's it is very very interesting yeah so uh, good luck with uh, with your project I hope the very best from you <laughs> thank you so much for your feedback yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that I think there's something quite interesting there Evan which I hadn't thought about but it's actually really it's interesting <laughs> It's interesting to talk about how maybe taking the kind of cultural, stylistic um, appropriation from each country and then using the same concept. I think that's really very interesting. I hadn't thought of that, Evan. That's really quite interesting. How would it work in a Chinese culture and an Indonesian culture, Malaysian, if you took the form of almost traditional art and then you use that as the basis for the exact same, almost like content, um, uh, that's, that's, that's an interesting idea. How, how would that concept translate culturally? I don't know, maybe that's something we need to think about. It will be a very big project for you and uh, uh, and, if, uh, and, uh, and, and if you can execute it very well and maybe post it to your uh, maybe uh, Behance or other portfolio sites, mm -hmm. it would be very great. Yeah, that'd be good. Ooh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe, do we have time for more questions? No, okay. Okay, so I think the last question wraps up the Q&A and feedback session for this presentation. Thank you very much to Juby Thomas for the amazing presentation. It really highlights the importance of uh, food waste uh, problems and also cultural, bringing culture into our design as well. Um, next up, we have a presentation from Chen Yin and team from TAR UMT. Yes, hello everyone. Okay, at first, uh, let me just present my slide. Um, can I ask Izzy, you all can see my slide? Yes, yes, can see. Okay, so let's move on. So hello everyone, my name is Kwek Chen Yin and I'm a student, graphic design student from Taru MT Malaysia. So I'm glad to have the opportunity to present of making this presentation. And to begin with, my presentation concerns about the topic of life below water. And I know the time that given is short in within five minutes. So I intend to keep this briefly short. So let's move on. So let's meet our team. So I'm the person to represent our whole team and our teammates includes of Lai Shi, Chen Di Sun, and last but not least is So Yi Tian. So next. So our problem is about water pollution causing disruption to marine life. So as we know, water pollution causing um, disruption to marine life and over 100,000 of marine animals die for every year just because of humans' behaviors such as plastic encagement and ingestion. So more than 15% of sea turtles have consumed plastics for every day. And the water pollution kills the whole marine animals in the ocean, no matter in Malaysia or in worldwide. Next. So based off our research, 
Malaysia country is among the top eight countries discharge, discharging the plastic into the ocean. So as we know, plastic is a non-biodegradable things, and it remains it can remain for for almost several until eight hundred years in this earth. So plastics will not only de fully decompose, and it will just only break down in into a small microplastic. You cannot see the microplastic because they are dangerous and manage to leak into the water and the ground in this earth. So at the same time, physical pollution, which is referred from the polluters that can change the physical properties from waters and such as the heat, the oil, the foam and other pollution. And this diagram is showing one of the river in Malaysia, which is the Huda River in Kampung Sempakat Senai. Next, uh, I will introduce about biological pollution and its contaminated water can have bacteria such as the responsive for diarrhea, the type hepatitis A and polio. So according to, to the UN, for every year, approximately, approximately 297,000 children under five just die from this disease from the water pollution. And it is a um, dangerous problems in this world. The next one is about the biological pollutions and it's referred to the deterioration of the smells, the taste, the appearance and transparent, transparency and extra And the pollution is caused by and discharge into the natural water things like the rivers in Malaysia. And how critical is this problem in Malaysia? So let's just study off. To begin with, it caused from the plastic waste. And as we know, the marine trash is encompassed manufactured products and most thing affected is the plastic and is end up in the oceans and almost for 18% of which come is from our land in Malaysia. And common type of marine debris includes the various plastic items things like the shopping bags that we use for every day when we go, sh go to shopping and the plastic bottles that we use after we drink the water. And this plastic waste is problematically polluted because it is long lasting. Okay, next one. What caused plastic waste? As we know, don't recycle plastic, literally, and throw the plastic into the drain is the most harmful problem in, in nowadays. Okay, so as we can see from a diagram F at the left hand side, is showing the Klang River, which is also one one of the river in our Malaysia, and is it is a top two rivers of the most concern in Malaysia, and is just arranged and stand out in Malaysia just from it contains one point three three of per percentage of the global ocean plastic pollution. So as we know, it's already a, being a serious issue in global. Okay, next. Um, it also caused the death of the, the death of fish in Malaysia and is a, is already achieved the seriousness of the level in this in this area. So how plastic waste becomes serious? So from the timeline, um before it's contained just only a small amount, but until today, the year of 2020, it's already achieved until 400 million of the plastic waste. So it's a so it's a serious problem that all the people will need to solve it. And so based off the diagram, it's showing the life cycle of the plastic. So um, mostly of the chemical and the things is contained a long lasting period of time to decompose. And the example of the marine life affected mostly, um, and as we know, and being teach, the total will just um, let the plastic and um, they will just they will just take the plastic as the jellyfish and take it, but actually they didn't know that's the rubbish um, that caused by the humans, and also it caused from the chemical. The example of chemicals, as we can see, such as the pesticide and oil dump, the civic fertilizers and detergents, and all of these harmful activities are come from humans. Okay, so. In Malaysia, the chemical issue has achieved the maritime ecology has into the years of 
tremendous pressure because of the water pollution and the plastic pollution. And the Strait of Malacca in Malaysia also heavy used for commerce, making them particularly, particularly susceptible to marine contaminators like oil and gills to benefit humans in nowadays. And the chemical pollution becomes serious just come from the oil and gills, the rise of global trade, the hazardous of the oil and long linger in the soil and marine life. So the significance of addressing this problem is about um, the harmful of water pollution comes from the production of humans, environment, and people. And almost 550 species of coral in Malaysia are already affected just because of humans' behavior, like just throwing the rubbish into the ocean. And the plastic pollution against oceans also, um, they went out into the sea, either in physical form or smaller particles called microplastic. And next one, um, as as we can just well saying, don't just a book by its cover. So actually, it's, it seems like the life under the water from the top. You just see the surface, but if you observe just overall it clearly, you will just discover it's a big problem to marine life and their environment. So followed by the uh, just well saying from Robert Swan, the greatest danger to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. So, um, come to the conclusion from our teams is um, let us just reduce the bad habit, which is um, uh, let us just reduce the bad habit and decrease um so that we can decrease the decrease the species of the marine life and provide them a good environment. So that's all from my presentation. Right. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh -huh. maybe, yeah, maybe there's some feedbacks or questions from the professors. Okay. Uh, Juby has just asked, uh, are you trying to create awareness through the posters? Wow, that's, I like that. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> we went into infinity and then come back. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Chen. Um, Juby is just asking, are you using the posters as a design to create awareness? Um, so just to begin with, our team, the reason why our team use the poster method um, compared to other methods is about it's affordable and the, the cost compared to other methods is lower and is exist mm -hmm. for a long time. And it also can spread the basic knowledge on how to take care of the marine life to many audience, no matter um, in what age, just such as kids, the adult, and the youngers for nowadays. And it can reach the knowledge to the local impact, which is, as we know, the demographic. When we design a poster and we just put a portrait in the right, right places, um, such as the beach and um, such as along the um, just near the oceans, the sea, mm. it can place the most function and um, it can yeah. place the most true function and it can um, become an outdoor advertising and capture viewers eyes when we want we want <coughs> to deliver the true message to the audience. I, th I think that's a. I think that's really interesting, and uh, I think it works. And I know Ray's going to say something, but I just want to say something before he does. Um, I, th I thought what was really interesting about your presentation was it was really professional. It was good, but actually, I learned something that I did. I didn't know this, and it's always good when this happens. Um, I didn't know that um, the physical properties of water are actually altered yes. through um, pollution. I always just thought they could be filtered out, but if they're altered, that's 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 quite. Um, that's really quite important. I didn't know that. That was, thanks for that. That's good information. I didn't know it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your question and, and thanks all. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Um, so 
Uh, this is the interesting things about uh, today's uh, presentation uh, or today's um, what is it discussion because actually it's quite interesting that uh, in Indonesia we have the same problem <coughs> in Malaysia then <laughs> we have the same water uh, water problem in with uh, Malaysia uh, because exactly the same uh, with the with what uh, Chen. Sorry, how does pronounce your name? Chen Xin, yeah. Chen Yin. Chen yeah. Chen Chen Yin, yeah. So what you mentioned yes. about uh, microplastic and then talking about uh, eutrophication? Did you talk about that? eutrophication? Uh, if you don't know about that, uh, later on you can try to find out about eutrophication. Water uh, pollution is a lot. Uh, my suggestion here: probably you need to focus on one thing. Uh, instead of uh, a lot of things, if you want to talk about um, microplastic, we have in Indonesia focus on uh, microplastic is ecoton. There's a chat there, so my uh, friend here uh, helped me to uh, type it. The Instagram is ecoton.id. You can try to find there the information about microplastic. Or if you don't find it uh, easy there, because maybe some of the information is Indonesian, maybe you can try to go Netflix. You can try to go uh, Plastic Island in Netflix. So Plastic Island in Netflix. You can try to watch that. Uh, so Mr. Prigby, as the founder of the Ecoton, he's trying to um, develop or learn more about microplastic and then he found out so uh, mad that actually in our body, in Indonesian body, uh, compared to others, is crazy. I don't know in Malaysia, but maybe you can, uh, if you want to focus on microplastic, you can try to um, think about that. And then if you're talking about eutrophication, it's quite interesting as well, but yeah. My, just, uh, my suggestion is try to focus on one thing instead of a lot of things, but it's okay. It's still uh, in an in a initial idea, so it's a good thing that you have a lot of that data that you have. But maybe later on for your uh, poster, uh, you need to find one the most interesting thing that you need to uh, tell to the world. Yeah, that's my suggestion, I think. Okay, thanks yeah. for the suggestion so much. I uh, love all that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rini. Do you have time for more questions? No, okay. Sadly, we do not have time for more questions. So thank you so much, Chen Yin, for the presentation. We still have three presentations left. Um, the next presentation is from Chuo Shun Li from BCU. I hope I pronounced that right. I turned off my microphone and my face and your Please. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep, yep, can. Yeah, Um, hi everyone, I'm Joshin and I'm from Birmingham City University. Today I want to talk about uh, global warming. Um, this is uh, my uh, main map, so you can see some of my uh, inspiration development process. Um, uh, and then this is a research by artists. <coughs> uh, these two artists, they uh, work um, protecting uh, article animals, uh, which helped me a lot. And then uh, this is a um, um, specific research study about the repaired uh, melting uh, of uh, Arctic ice uh, due to warming that I found in the news. Um, according to the current uh, um, carbon emission targets of um, countries, um, it is a no enough to save polar bears in the most uh, um, 
affected uh, <laughs> areas international climate um scientists say it will take um 10 to uh, 50 years for global uh, temperatures to um stabilize and it will take time to see um sea ice pairs after the climate uh stabilize it will take another um 10 to um years to us and uh um my final direction was to do an uh introduce the uh, tutorial books for children age um one to 50 years as um adults have a uh, format their men and children are the easy to change so i did a more uh, childlike um introductory book for children and uh, finally um this is um some college and the uh series uh like the illustration and, and something the um, uh, draft of my final introductory books. And this is the process uh, and the sketch. And this is a final the uh, uh, introductory books uh, sketch. Yeah, thank you. Very quick. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for the presentation. So maybe there are some feedbacks or questions. Oh, better. Go. On. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. So can I just ask a question? <laughs> I was going to. Um, so, so you're designing this. I can see they can on this, and they can hear you and shout over. Um, so you, you're designing this for young children as an educational children's book for young children now? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, young children at this time. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is a, a young, young children, children the, the book because I, I am the um, uh, study of illustration. So I, I want to help the um, children to clear, to understand why we need to protect the uh, article eyes. So, so, so it's partly about explaining to young children, not just about polar bears, but about what will happen if the Antarctic disappears or the Arctic disappears, both poles shrink and there's no more ice or less ice. Uh, yeah, there's a um, uh, the both we we want to talk about. She also said one interesting point that it is easy to persuade kids as compared to adults. So uh, I don't I don't know if you could hear. What, sorry. Oh, you can hear because Evans just smiled. Um, I think that's an interesting point that Juby's just made, and it's something that I think um, who was it? Um, uh, Chen Young spoke about previously, and that was audiences. It's one of the things that um. A lot of us have sort of skirted around without addressing directly. And there's something that um, Cheska said there, which was uh, young audiences are more malleable, more, 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 more open to be educated in different ways. I think that's maybe a question <clears throat> that maybe we should all think about is how are we designing what we're designing for specific audiences? Um, because I think that's really a very interesting one. Some of the students are actually identifying a group and saying, you know, it is, it is just, for example, for example, you know, you know Juby said, said, maybe just maybe people, just people in, in parts of, of India, India, or, you know, it's maybe just how pollution is seen. I think being able to, uh, being, being able to articulate and identify an audience and then find the medium that works for the audience sort of should help everybody, actually. Um, what do you think, Evan? Am I close or am I miles out? <laughs> I 
Und wenn ich nicht Handy ist, einfach meine und nutzt. Ja. We have a lot of feedback. Did that, did that make sense, what I was saying there about our audiences? Because um, I think that that would be useful for everyone to think about. Uh, so I think in terms of, you know, what you're saying, Cheska, you're, you're designing this as a children's book that's educational. So it's a, it's a it's to inform. And that notion of being able to almost like catch them at a young age so they become used to what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. I've got some nodding heads in the office here, so I think that's going okay. <clears throat> so it's gone all quiet. <laughs> Maybe there's more feedback from the other professors. Uh, no, for me, no, for me. Great uh, presentation. Okay, um, such an interesting concept. Perhaps it'll be maybe adding some interactive elements would do well Ooh. for attracting the children. Okay. That's fair. Oh, actually, that's very interesting. Uh, um, I never thought of that. If you were thinking about interactive elements, if it's a children's book, do you do maybe a pop-up book? Do you do a children's book you illustrate and then you use possibly AR for, because most children know how to use the laptops, phones, screen grabs, the screen grabs, I'm, iPads is what I meant to say. <laughs> but they might know how to use pads. I think that's an interesting thing. Maybe using AR as a form of educational development that maybe takes um, some of the images that are ch childlike, but then takes them to, other points that are online, possibly. I never thought of that. Maybe that's something to think about, Cheska. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. That's yeah, that's right. Because uh, one of my students as well before making a like uh, AR book for for like alliteration for uh, saving money for children and stuff. It's it's quite interesting because uh, uh, from. Right now, technology is always uh, come to the children, right? So basically, when when they say book, it's a normal book, but when, but when come with the AR, they are more interesting. They're like, they is like they try to reach it, but actually they can't. It's just uh, in matter of just get from the uh, phone, right? But it's quite That's, interesting. Yeah. Maybe you can develop for for it. I mean. I I was just going to say, Ray, there is a, there's a great YouTube video um, I showed to my students sometime. It's a two-year-old girl. She's two years old, and her parents give her an ordinary magazine, just a kind of paper magazine. And the first thing this child does, picks up the magazine like a pad and starts to pinch and starts to sweep and can't understand why it doesn't work because the child's never seen a paper magazine. They've been working on pads literally since they were born so i think that's there's some interesting things in there you're right about um how the technology changes how we design for the audiences that we need to design for that's a good point actually yeah good point right yeah thank you thank you I'm okay so i think that concludes uh, the feedback session so okay easy. next up we have a pre another presentation from BCU from Tiao Wang. Oop. So, can you see my screen? Uh, I can't see your screen yet. No, okay. I can. I can see you. you can just see me. Yep, yep, yep. I can just see you. Oh no, that's the problem. Just having a slight technical issue. Wait a moment. I need to turn off and turn on again. She may have to turn off and turn on again.
She's coming back into the meeting. Um, she's having to restart. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Just having a few technical issues. You joined again? I'll stop that happening. Ah, yep, yes. Oh, we can see your whole. Yep. No, don't say that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. If you just do. Uh... I'm sorry, everyone. Um, and my name is Zia Wan, and I come from Birmingham City University. <coughs> and from this PowerPoint, I want to talk about the project of Earth 101. And uh, I choose uh, the fifth theme, Life Online, and the target 15. Sit, um, Combat global poaching and uh, trafficking. And uh, the first part is my personal story. Um, in China, many dog meat dealers have been poisoning random dogs on the streets in order to sell more dog meat, result the death of many street dogs and even domestic dogs. And because I still have a little cute puppy dog, so I'm so worried about that my dog will be poisoned too. So I strong condemn <coughs> and the dog meat dealers who kill lives at all in order to gain more money. Even if they are white dogs with the owners, they have the right to life. So it's not just for dogs, it's uh, all about killing and selling animals for profit. I hope that through this project, more people will take the lives of animals seriously and the authorities will restrain and punish those hunters. And um, next part is my inspiration comes from a short animation about a world dominated by animals. If you have some interest in this film, you can click the web link. And through this short film, I thought about if human and animals can uh, switch roles and we become good and food in the hand of animals, object to the hunt and killed by animals. Uh, it allowed the viewers to bring themselves to work when they uh, watch the posters so that may be able to understand the feelings and the conditions of the animals when they are hunted and killed. And so I research about which animals killers because it is so beauty, like the elephant, coral, tigers, etc. Um, human one gain their part of body to make into valuable artifacts. So and uh, and also research about uh, animals and and that is over hunted for its so uh, delicacy. You can see the pictures and uh, next part is my sketch. Uh, those are my first poster sketch because the human over hunted bears and want to eat their pose. So my, my idea is human hand become the food of the bears and uh, those are evolutionary process. And same as the first poster, those are my sketch of the poster two and three. It's the elephant of the teeth and the heart of human. It is to the uh, satirize the killing of the elephant and the overfishing of marine life by humans, destroying the ecological balance of the ocean as much as the heart of the mankind. Oh, uh, there's there's some my test post one using strong contrast in the color and uh, highlight the uh, um, thematic text and dark <coughs> and uh, sinister painting style and uh, glory elements help to make the viewer feel uncomfortable. Okay. 
and those are my um, test posters. Mm, I can't see your test you posters. You can't see them. Mm. Sorry. Oh no. Uh, maybe. Sorry. Wait a moment. Can you see this? Uh -huh, we can see. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So these are some tests. Yeah. This uh, text one and uh, this uh, text two just not finished. Uh, it's more like the advertisement of the animals world. Mm. Um, yeah, that's. Mm. Thank you for watching my PowerPoint. Welcome to ask me any questions. Thank you. Okay, shall I? Okay, maybe any feedbacks or questions? Um, I've got I've just got a couple. Um, so where did where did you find the turning point animation? I've never seen that before, of where where animal animals take over the planet, become the. Uh, it's from YouTube. Uh, come from YouTube. Okay. Uh, 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 what? <laughs> no, she's fine. She's fine. So you found you found it on YouTube. Yeah. So just just to be clear, the the concept you've got is that you it's sustainable goal fifteen, life on land, but you're specifically dealing with fifteen C, mm -hmm. which is poaching and okay, and the idea. The concept is to visualize what happens if animals ruled the planet yeah. and humans were the food. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, uh, uh, in Chinese word is uh, 以牙还牙,以眼还眼, and change to the English is beat someone with their own game. Okay, so that's interesting. So. That, that's <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's an interesting concept to to beat someone at your own game. Um, okay. Qu the question is, you, you're you're designing these as posters. Yeah. So again, is there an audience for that poster that is very specific? Mm -hmm. Because some people have said their audiences are, you know, children, or it's an educational game about pollution, or it's a box where you design things. Do you have an audience in mind? I think my. Stuff like the WWF or the authorities uh, stuff like this, oh, they will punch the the killer and the hunters. I think the okay. main audience is, and not the rest <coughs> of the one. So the audience is aimed at the people at the top yeah. who have the power yeah. to then enact yeah. and then stop or try to stop yeah. poaching for these specific types. Yeah. Okay, I think that's interesting. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? No, no, no. <laughs> Not at this stage. Oh, somebody's put into the chat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Humans are a food thing and animals are in charge, basically. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a good point. It's, it, it, that sounds a lot like Animal Farm. That is a really good point. I've forgotten about that one. Yeah, well done, Marvoli. I completely forgot Animal Farm for the in charge. But this is much more graphic. Or... Uh, graphic. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Completely forgot about that. Okay, good, good, good. I uh, <coughs> have any questions or not? No questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, last but not least, we have the last presentation for today from Theodore Michael and team from Chiputra University. Good evening, Good evening fellow participants. I'm Theo with Vincent, and this is Fata Ayan. Our team consists of Astrid and Kinanda and Ruben operating the monitor. 
We are from Visual Communication Design of Ciputra University Indonesia. Today, we will be representing NTK production with our project Who's Rest? Who's Rest? Which is based on sustainable development goals number 15, live online. Have you ever been taught to put your trash in the trash bin? I guess everyone here has been taught that since we were young. And just like it, and every one of you, the Surabayan have done the same for a long, long time. But did you know where those trash end up? Based on a survey we did in one of Surabaya's districts spanning across 2,500 hectares, every day they produce about 30 tons of trash. That's about 900 tons every day. And only about five to six tons every day can be reused again and doesn't end up rotting in the landfill. And to make matters worse, this survey is done on one of Surabaya's athlete district, which already has a very good waste management system. Imagine other districts without those sophisticated waste management systems. Imagine the whole Java, imagine the whole Indonesia, the whole Asia, even the whole world we live in. You can try searching about an incident in Louis Gaja, which happened in 2005 where an explosion happened because of a trash pile up in the landfill in which organic trash decomposes in a closed environment and creates a methane gas deposit inside a trash pile up which heats up after a long time and explodes blasting trash to every part of the two affected villages trapping and creating many villages there that incident took more than 150 casualties 157 to be exact and covered two villages with trash, which destroyed the lives and futures of those affected, their families, and most importantly, the livelihood. Whose trash caused that? Obviously, our trash, which we didn't sort, which we didn't reuse. Through this project, we wanted to raise awareness about the topic we all looked down upon with our full-length documentary about trash and where these things end up. We want everyone to see what goes on in those landfills from the way sorters perspective, from the street sweepers perspective, and everyone taking care of our trash. We want people to start thinking about what happens on those landfill, on those waste management systems, and we want everyone to understand why should we properly sort our trash, not just simply dumping everything in the trash. I want every one of us to ask ourselves this question. Who stress and who stress? Here is our project teaser. Enjoy. Please wait for a minute. Masalahnya di masyarakat ini itu e, seringkali kurang kesadaran untuk memilah sampah. Itu sekitar 30 ton yang bisa kita manfaatkan dan ada harga ekonomisnya itu sekitar 5-6 ton tiap hari. Untuk masyarakat, lingkungannya untuk dicintai, pilih sampah, lingkungan kita bersih, bebas dari banjir, jelas itu aja.
Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe there's any feedbacks or questions from the participants or the professors? Maybe. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. I've just got to this two, two, two main ones. One, um, the title, Who's Trash and Who's Trash? I think that's really clever. Because just the, the, just the use of uh, the language there is really, it's, 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 it's very clever, it's quite witty. And also just ask those questions, I thought it's really good. Um, just a couple of questions. You, you mentioned 900 tons of you know trash. I said, it's just a question. What does 900 tons of trash look like if you make it into something? I thought that's an interesting point. And then there was something you said which I thought was really good. You said, the time, this was on the explosion, the time bomb is called food waste. And then you showed a series of um, recycle bins. And what suddenly occurred to me was, you're showing me the ingredients of a bomb where you may have one cycle, one material, one set of material, and when they all come together and they're left, they could explode. So I think you could, there's, a, there's three or four really good ideas in there. The production values of the trailer, I think is interesting. I think one of the questions I would ask about the trailer and the documentary is, um, how do you want the audience to feel? Not necessarily explain what it's about, but how do you want the audience to feel when they see the work? But I have to say, I really like the who's trash, who's trash. That's really clever. So to answer the first question about what does 900 tons look like, let's imagine a car. A car is about one and a half tons. So oh, okay. you can imagine about 600 of it piled up every month. Wow. You see, you see visually that, I mean, when you put the information out, people go, the information's interesting. But the minute you visualize it, people go, wow, it's just not something. So I think one of the things that could be useful is to maybe visualize some of the statistics or the facts where someone, because I, I, I mean, until you said a car weighed one and a half tons, I didn't even know how much a car weighed. So, so you go, when you suddenly say, imagine 600 or 650 cars, and that's the amount of rubbish, that you, you suddenly go, Oh, wow, that's not what I expect to see. So I think maybe dealing with some visual elements within the kind of film itself as either statistics or maybe graphic elements or maybe even like a three second animation which shows what it looks like is really useful. Um, and again, the, the, the time bomb, the food, the food waste, the ingredients that will eventually biodegrade but the gases can become explosive. I think if people knew that by combining some food waste, for example, they're actually not just they're not just con contributing to you know life on land, but what they're doing is creating not just um, a metaphorical time bomb, but they could be creating an actual time bomb. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's pretty, it pretty much makes sense. <laughs> so just you. just some some, ob some observations. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Theodore, Michael. Right. So uh, I think I think I like this group because uh, they I believe they've done some uh, uh, research and also they, they've done some interview just now yeah. based on the clips, and uh, one of the clips uh, uh, interview talks about the 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 one the interview said there's uh, about uh, nine tons of uh, uh, trash, right? Nine tons of trash. So, so I think numbers play an important role when we do uh, research like this. Uh, whichever your problem is, numbers play a role to convince people, to make people believe that, hey, this is a serious case. This is a serious problem that we should tackle. Not just uh, for your uh, trash problem, but I think also for... Uh, uh, other presenters as well. I think we really need to look into, like Rob said just now about a statistic which relates to uh, your problem. 
because we don't want to be accused of uh, design something that is uh, divorced away from uh, some real facts about uh, an, an issue. So that's the only way that we can uh, connect problems and uh, solution. And that's how we synthesize uh, our, our solution as well. So well done, well done, uh, Wei Jin. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, I think that concludes the feedback and question session for the team. Thank you so much for your presentation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you can hear, everyone in the room is clapping. <laughs> okay, we have heard from 11 amazing presenters. Um, various bringing various topics of sustainable development goals and I think um, today's session is a very insightful session many great ideas have been shared here and I think yeah. okay uh, and I think today's joint project is a great reminder that we as communication design students we as designers can make a change uh, maybe to any of the professors that are present here, maybe even the students, uh, maybe anyone wants to make a closing remark on today's event. Can I just start by saying, I'll make a closing remark and then I always do this, this is terrible, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'd just like to thank everyone for being involved in this because it's really interesting to see the different levels where people are coming through with different ideas for sustainability and the range. I mean, I'm, qu I'm quite impressed by the range of different types of approach that the students have in terms of how they're defining what sustainable is, <coughs> not just by the definitions of the United Nations, but how the students themselves are defining it. But also the fact that um, we're picking up and exchanging some really interesting statistical information and some design information in terms of solutions that we might not necessarily have thought about had we just remained on our own. So some of the kind of discussions and some of the things that are in the chat are really kind of very interesting in terms of where you can put things. So I think this becomes a useful kind of platform where there is an exchange of not just ideas, but processes, sometimes techniques. And also just the very fact that we've managed to get together at various different time zones. So I know here in the UK, it's nearly one o'clock. And I know that in Indonesia, and I'm just checking my top here, it's what, nearly eight o'clock at night. So we're finding all these different things. And I think being able to find a time slot where we can get together and make it work is actually really quite good. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite impressed with what I've seen. I think some of the stuff I've seen has been really insightful and useful. And just to see what develops from this, through this dialogue and discussion, I think it will be really useful when it comes to the hand in, you know, in a couple of weeks, well, nearly a month's time, to see how people have taken on board elements of this discussion and maybe even shared some of the ideas. I think that's going to be more important. And also, it's been quite enjoyable, but don't tell anyone because if people upstairs find out, they get annoyed. Okay, so that, that's what I'd like to say. And thank you everyone for doing it. Thank you, Ray, for organizing all of this and making it come together. Well done. Thanks. And uh, I also would like to thank the Indonesian counterpart, yeah, like Ray, uh, and also um, uh, my faculty members, uh, my superiors uh, who uh, in introduced this uh, program uh, to me as well. So thanks for uh, having us. Okay, uh, looks like I'm going to um, say uh, a few last words, basically. Yeah, so hope, uh, not too long. So, well, uh, um, <clears throat> I keep it for the last. So, after listening to all uh, participants, uh, 11 of them, I think more than 120 minutes or so, I think these days, um, <clears throat> even though one called himself or herself a designer, I think 
um, we have to really uh, uh, think seriously uh, on the issues that we actually uh, design on, uh, especially for the message and the visuals here. Yeah. So especially um, in terms of the uh, post-COVID days, so um, I think <clears throat> the, the 11 teams, uh, I think uh, all these uh, uh, young teams, uh, uh, I mean, you have uh, demonstrated uh, a very clever idea. Um, even though for this uh, uh, session, uh, it is not uh, uh, in the tangible form yet. So I hope, uh, you know, uh, 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 when you go back to your so-called uh, uh, supervisor or tutors, okay, I think uh, you can think, uh, you can bring it to another level on how, like I always say, uh, graphic design itself will not, you know, save the world. It is the um, people, you know, the designer like you all who really understand the power of communication and the use of design, all right? So if you really uh, know the, 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 the code actually from Professor Tear Tricks, I think, uh, you you guys are seriously doing a wonderful job, even uh, right from the start now. Uh, hope to see more uh, solid, work, uh, solid work from now. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. It's a really wonderful session. And the last one is, I think, uh, from me. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, everyone. I think I have the my greatest session here. <laughs> So our students have shown their greatest taste in design and research in a very clever way, and I and I want to think, oh, I, and I want to thank to every lecturer here, every professor here. Yes, <laughs> we are doing our great to uh, uh, to help them, and especially for this SDGs, SDGs project. Uh, I know uh, we cannot com completely solve this pro SDGs problem, but at least our students and us. We know there's this problem exists, so uh, so we cannot uh, neglect it. Yeah, something like that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, maybe is there any last words from Professor Eva from the uh, university? Uh, you're. Uh, I'm sorry. You are still muted. We can't hear. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I thought I don't have to say something because I already say <laughs> at the beginning. But um, very uh, lucky, I uh, me and my student joined this program, and then we learn a lot. And also, thank you all to uh, give uh, the students all the suggestion. I agree. All I agree. All your uh, suggestion. Um, the the design is a power things to solve the problem to show how they solve the problem i think uh uh at the end they maybe they they were going to the further to use a design to solve the actual problem and then uh i think that's a goal so um hope everyone can enjoy uh their design project thank you thank you so much um, yeah, I think we have. Okay, right. Thank you so much for everyone. Thank you. Uh, maybe once again, applause to everyone, every of us here. So yeah, thank you, uh, Ray, Regina, the, uh, to be a host and also the moderator today as well. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for everything. I think yeah, <laughs> they are there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all there. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll so be the <laughs> Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's all. Uh, thank you so much for your support from for uh, from BZU, from Daya, and also.